This was not an easy production. But wait, let's start from the beginning. What's up guys, it's Yuval here and in today's video I want to show you how I created this fashion film. From start to finish I'm gonna touch on the gear, cinematography, editing, color grading and everything in between as well as some of the challenges we faced and the things I've learned from this production. But first I think it would make sense for us to watch the entire thing, the finished edit. Um, so let's do that and then we'll break everything down. Okay, so there's quite a lot to cover, but let's start with some context. A few weeks back, two awesome guys approached me to create a new campaign for their clothing brand, John Landry. They really came to me with an open mind and wanted to give me full creative control. For this task, I knew I needed to bring on two of my very good friends and talented creatives, Yair, who is an insanely talented fashion photographer, and then Eden was there to help me with all of the gear, pulling focus and basically everything around so that I can just focus on shooting, which is what I'm supposed to do. Then there was Ilan shooting the behind the scenes for this video, basically making this video possible, so thank you Ilan. And then there was also Sandra to assist in whatever we needed help with. We finally decided on the concept, which would require a studio space and some nature. The initial idea was to find a nice green landscape, but after a very failed location scout day, we came to the unfortunate conclusion that this just wasn't the right time of year to shoot green landscape. Production was just a few days away, so what we did is we decided to change the location, and we moved everything to the desert. Things are going to go wrong, you're going to have to change plans, and that's just part of the way it is. Make the change and make it happen. So I made this half shooting list, half mood board to help with the production. Um, I knew that because we were also shooting stills, I wouldn't really be able to get all of the shots I wanted. I knew it was gonna be a bit messy, a little bit of a run and gun kind of thing, um, juggling between photos and videos, um, which by the way is not something I recommend at all. If you can, try to separate video and photos into two different days. Um, on this production we just didn't have the budget or time to do so, but knowing that I was planning accordingly. So I made this mood board to kind of um, guide me as we go through the day. I knew the few specific shots that I had to get because I already saw the final video in my head. So for example, the opening shot and then the other shots I was just relying on um, instinct and like the mood board, there were always these references in my head. So I was um, not stuck at any point of the production, like not knowing what to shoot. So now let's talk about the actual shooting and I'm gonna start with what we all really love, gear, and in this case, gear really does matter. So in most of the videos I've shot this far, I've only shot on the Pocket 6K or the GH5, usually the 6K, uh, with the Sigma 18 to 35 out, and like that setup is great, it has amazing picture quality and really I think you can do amazing things with it. But for this production, I knew I wanted to bring something different. I know what I can get from the Pocket and the Sigma, 
and it just wasn't what I was looking for for this video. I knew that by choosing different gear, mainly the lenses, which then affected the camera choice, um, I would be able to get something that looks different from all the other videos around and really make this video unique. So for this video, I really wanted to utilize a lot of zoom shots, like the opening shot, and for that I needed a zoom lens that was per focal, which means as you zoom in and out, the focus doesn't change. And the Pocket 6K is EF and there's really no good way to adapt it to PL. Plus those lenses are really heavy and big and it just doesn't fit the form factor of the Pocket 6K. So with that in mind, I knew I needed a camera that has a PL mount and I chose to go with the Ursa Mini 4.6K. Why not the newer 12K? just because of budget. Um, so the Ilsa was a good choice. I've also shot with it before, so I already know the camera. And honestly, I just love Blackmagic. The zoom lens I ended up going for is the size 11 to 110 millimeters. It's an old Super 16 lens, which means it doesn't really cover the Super 35 sensor. So when shooting on the Osa, I had to go into the crop mode. And when I didn't go into the crop mode, it also gave me, honestly, a pretty cool effect with this huge vignette, uh, which I thought was very stylized and um, really unique. Now this zoom lens was made around the early 80s, maybe even late 70s. So it's definitely not the cleanest, sharpest uh, looking image. And like, that's what I wanted for this shoot. I knew I wanted something a little bit more vintage, a little bit more old, something softer. And this lens gave me exactly that. The only thing I didn't really like was the chromatic aberration and you could really see it here in this shot. And honestly, I could have removed it probably. Um, if I tried enough, but I just thought it worked okay, so I left it. The second lens choice was the Zeiss standard speed 10 millimeter. I have seen a lot of videos shot with this lens and honestly, I just really looked for an opportunity to use it. It's a super wide lens, but like with barely any distortion, which is uh, fantastic if you wanna do really wide um, close up kind of things. And I thought having that lens together with the zoom lens would pretty much cover me for whatever shots I needed for this project. Apart from the lenses, I've also used the EasyRig Vario 5 to support all of that weight because the Ursa Mini is super heavy. And together with the zoom lens and the huge size standard speed lens, um, it was really heavy and I had to use an EasyRig um, otherwise would have been dead. We also used the Holy Land mouse to transmit video from the camera to the monitor wirelessly. And then on my camera, we had the Portkeys BM5. And to pull focus, we used the Noculus M. And last but not least, we had the Sony camcorder, which was super fun to shoot with. And I ended up using a lot of the footage on the final edit. Um, these are all like the parts that kind of look like VHS. Um, so I knew I wanted that in the edit. So hence the Sony camcorder. Going back and forth between the super heavy Ursa setup and the tiny camcorder was pretty funny, um, but it was honestly a lot of fun to shoot on and it worked. So we shot the entire thing in one day. Um, that's all we could do with the budget that we had. So the first part of the day was the studio. We arrived there early in the morning and we only had a limited amount of time because we had to also drive out to the desert, which was a two hour away drive. In terms of lighting for a lot of these shots, it was only the projector with no additional lights. And then on other shots, we used the Nanlite FS150 to bounce some light off the white wall to the sides or move the light around to create this um, effect. And then we also played around with the Nanlite Pavo tube, which is an RGB light that I take with me to any production. Links to all of that in the description. After the studio, we had a two hour drive into the desert and we started shooting just before sunset. We were only using natural light since we didn't really have all of the gear and the uh, manpower, honestly, to create huge um, setups with like, you know, big diffusions and all of that stuff. Um, it just wasn't like a production like that. Um, we didn't have the manpower, we didn't have the time also. Um, so we just had to do with the natural lighting, um, which is fine. For the zoom shots, we mounted the follow focus on the zoom ring and it honestly didn't work out as well as we expected it to. Um, probably we should have rented out like a proper um, zoom model unit, but eventually with the help of some slow motion and then also warp stabilizer, um, and a few takes, we managed to get the shots we needed. Then some other shots were more of a run and gun style um, shoot, which wasn't easy at all with the huge setup that I had. I was running around trying to um, capture, um, you know, as many shots 
as I could basically and also looking back into my middle note uh, mood board and again we just had to do that dance between stills and the video uh, which is never easy but I'm happy with the shots we were able to get. After the sun has gone down we shot into blue hour and we had this special glass that we rented out from someone and that you could actually stand on um, so that's not just like any glass if you want to do it don't use just any glass you have to get uh, one that you can stand on uh, you could even jump on, on that specific one you could even have two people on it so basically we had our models stand on the glass and then we shot from underneath and then it kind of looks like they're basically floating like in, in middle air uh, which is pretty cool and to light this we again used the Nanlite power tubes um, on the red color which contrasted really well with the deep blue skies and just finding this glass like someone that would rent it out for us and then also um, just getting it to the desert uh, was not easy it's a super heavy glass you have to make sure it doesn't get scratches and like, it was not easy to get it but looking back I think it was worth the hassle um, because we did manage to get shots that um, you don't see in any video and it's just something that helps make this video more unique so that was the actual shooting and then it was time to put everything together into a final edit something that i've been really trying to improve on and is also something that i've seen in almost any video that i like over the last couple of months is this sense of a changing pace and then also a more unique alternative style of music. I found a beautiful cinematic score on Musicbed and then with that I layered a lot of atmospheric sound effects from Artlist. My edit starts off with these long zoom shots which um, helps build tension right at the beginning and like sort of just reveal uh, the characters, the location and just the overall atmosphere uh, for the film. This entire opening sequence is kind of slow and cinematic, it's really building up and then there's the drop, we move into a fast paced um, quick edit kind of sequence with a lot of energy um, with a lot of effects that I've done practically in Premiere then also some After Effects and some film overlays from Century 8. Now there's quite a lot in here in terms of like technically how I edited this with all the effects and stuff. So if you guys want to see a more in-depth breakdown of this, um, let me know down in the comments. Then we slow down again into this euphoric outer space filling sequence, which is again that change of pace that I was talking about earlier. And then that's leading up to another fast pace sequence that ends the video. So we go from slow cinematic opening to fast paced to slow again and then into the final piece which is very fast and it kind of ends uh, with a bang and I think that sort of editing style works way better than just having like a very linear um, tone to the whole thing you know like a linear pace. So that's just an overall like, overlook on the edit and again if you want to see a more in-depth tutorial let me know in the comments uh, but now let's move into color grading. So the most challenging shot was definitely the opening shot. Whenever you shoot sunset backlit like that it's very difficult to maintain all of the dynamic range, the details and the color um, in the sky and then also preserve enough details in the shadows. So for that I used the HDR wheels which um, was my first time using them and I was super impressed with what I could get out of that. I think it would have been very difficult to grade it the same way without the HDR controls. So I'm glad this shot gave me the opportunity to actually use the HDR wheels and test them out because I'm gonna be using them a lot now. So whenever you have a scene with a very high dynamic range, um, I definitely suggest going for the HDR wheels. It's gonna make your life way easier. For most of the other shots, I color graded them with the Century 8 film power grade, which I spent a lot of time creating and developing. And if you wanna get that, then there's also a link in the description with a 10% off um, discount code. Since making these power grades, I've used them on almost any project that I color. Because it's a power grade and not a lot, it's very versatile and I can make it work for whatever project uh, with whichever camera I'm shooting and whatever profile I'm shooting on. So again, if you wanna check these out, there's a link in the description below. 
So in the end, I was really happy with how this whole campaign turned out, the video and then also the stills. Um, as a whole, this campaign was successful. The clients were happy, we were happy with the results. Um, so overall, a successful campaign, despite all of the challenges that it presented. I also really learned a lot from this and um, hopefully you guys did as well from watching this behind the scenes video. Being able to create something that comes from my heart and my creative vision is really um, amazing and I'm very privileged to have uh, gotten this opportunity to really make something that comes from within me. And especially being able to do that with some of my best friends um, and best creative people I know, um, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. So if you've made it this far into the video, I just wanna say thank you. I really, really appreciate it. And if you have any more questions that I didn't cover, um, in this video, let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to reply to you um, as soon as possible. And also you could DM me at uvala96 on Instagram. Um, let's connect, let's talk, shoot me a DM. I also upload a lot of behind the scenes uh, from productions over there, as well as just my daily life as a creative. So if you wanna check that out, it's uvala96. And if you wanna check out the film assets and the film power grades, again, there's a link in the description with 10% off discount but that is honestly it for this video um, thank you again for watching if you want to see more videos make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel that would mean a lot to me um, so thank you again and i'm gonna see all of you in the next one